was an official visit at that time. So hopefully today uh, we can share a bit more information about Brunei and what we have been doing over the last couple of years. And uh, for many of you who came from uh, other uh, sort of sort of non-government, the private sector side, maybe fund manage fund fund manager, you know, private equity and, and that. Maybe we could also <coughs> maybe share more information about about uh, Brunei. This morning uh, we had a country presentation at uh, at uh, ten o'clock back at the hall, <coughs> and everyone who attended. Uh, the country presentation had never visited Brunei. And uh, I'm not sure whether any one of you here have been to Brunei. No, okay, good. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I see faces, uh, maybe some of you also did, did, did not attend this morning's session. So I thought it might be good if I could uh, ask the, the CEO of uh, Brunei Economic Development Board uh, to share a few information just to run down uh, some of the uh, introduction about Brunei before we start the roundtable discussion. So, if that is okay with everybody, yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe soon you like to maybe sort of uh, show the video and talk a little bit more about Brunei. <coughs> maybe the the sectors that we are focusing on and things. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Honorable uh, Dr. Todamin, uh, our Deputy Finance Minister. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining us, uh, everybody. Um, I also have an interesting Ukraine story. Uh, my, my high school teachers, uh, one of my favorite is actually from Ukraine. And, and I remember, why are you so nice as a person? And she say, you, know, you should come down to Ukraine. And, and I never did. So maybe now with this weekend, <laughs> uh, finally do something Ukraine. So uh, good afternoon. Thank you for, for, for being here. Um, this is really Brunei first our official road show uh, about Brunei. So we're very, very excited that we are you know, making historical uh, moments and historical time. So first of all, like uh, Datuk was saying, so how many of us have been to Brunei? Okay, how many have not to Brunei? <laughs> okay. So after this, we'd like to hand you a list, and then with that, we will register your name, and then we book your flight to Brunei. <laughs> there you go. Um, how much do you know about Brunei, actually? Um, in a, it's in, in Asia somewhere, right? Uh, we usually get Indo next to Indonesia. Uh, we share the same islands as, as Indonesia, actually. Uh, Brunei is, is a country not, not many people, uh, people heard of, but may, no, never many people been to. I think the interesting about Brunei, you have to know, is our people are very, very friendly. Uh, nice people. Um, there are about half a million uh, people in Brunei altogether. Uh, size of Brunei is about the size of Dubai. Um, we like to compare uh, Brunei with Dubai in some sense that this is Dubai obviously have done quite well in the diversification effort uh, away from oil and gas and Brunei we are still in the middle of going through that uh, so in doing that we love uh, to have lots of partnership uh, for us to do that um, we, we are fortunate uh, enough to have a lot of wealth um, from oil and gas uh, but however it, the, the curse cut the other way uh, which is in this age of when we're trying to diversify or from the economy we really need the different partner that can provide the different technology uh, to Brunei. Brunei is fortunate to have the third highest educated base of, of, of people in South Asia. So people ask you, people are educated, uh, but might not be skilled in that particular industry that we're looking at. So this is something that we, we are looking forward to, uh, to do uh, with our friends in Brunei. Um, maybe I'll, I'll start uh, by sharing a little bit more about Brunei. I think that will be interesting. So, the first thing you have to know about Brunei is not just about Brunei, it's about the whole of Southeast Asia. So if I can click. So, yeah. So Southeast Asia, where Brunei is in the middle of, is the fifth largest market in the entire world. So here you have Indonesia, we have Singapore, we have Thailand, uh, Malaysia. We think that ASEAN is going to go through absolutely another boom uh, that uh, many people might not be fully aware of. And, and the whole region will grow about uh, a moderate 4 to 5% uh, in the next uh, few years. That the interesting about Brunei is, is Brunei and Singapore are probably the two most stable points in the whole of Southeast Asia. Uh, Singapore has its own curse. That four years in a row is the most expensive place in the whole of Southeast Asia already. So we like to think that Brunei is a slightly more friendly and cheaper alternative um, to Brunei, um, uh, to, to, to Singapore. Um, the ruling party of Brunei, 
it's been around for 500 years. So it spells stability. Um, the first real big FDI into Brunei is with Shell. Uh, and that partnership has lasted a century. Uh, stability, and that's, we have another partnership with Mitsubishi of Japan. Uh, Mitsubishi has been uh, with us for 50 years. And that partnership stay until now. And, and that's a good thing about a small country. We, we want to make sure that all the partnership that we have remain constant. Uh, because it's a small country, you can't make too many mistakes. So we want to really honor all the different partnerships that we do have uh, inside here. So that's, so Brunei is right in the middle of Southeast Asia. And if you look at the geographic, this, when you blow it up, this is how it looks like. Within two, let me see if I can, yeah. Within two hours of flight, let me see how to do that. Oh, there we go. Within two hours of flight, we touch base with 60% of the population of Southeast Asia, cutting Jakarta, Singapore, uh, KL. And three hour flight, you cut through pretty much the whole of Southeast Asia, including Hong Kong. And four hours away, you, you were talking about we touching Korea as well as um, uh, Shanghai already. So we are really strategically very uh, right at the middle of it. And historically, before the rise of Singapore, this is a logistic hub for, for the region as well. A lot of the ancient trades cut through Brunei. So this is what we are doing right now. We just signed a deal with, with China. So we're cutting a, a shipping route right directly to here. Um, and then with that, we like to radiate uh, to the rest of Southeast Asia. So, so when you think about Brunei, don't think just about Brunei, because with that, it's only half a million people, not too exciting. We like to think of you, we investing in Brunei, through Brunei into the rest of Southeast Asia. Uh, Brunei speak two languages. First language is obviously uh, English. Uh, very, very fluent in English, most of the population of Brunei. We recently just set up an English school in Vietnam uh, to teach our neighbor English. Uh, Brunei, uh, we grew up with BBC, CNN, um, small country has that. Uh, Facebook penetration, we are number one in Asia uh, a few years ago. Um, so it's just very tech, technologically savvy um, people uh, in Brunei. Um, the other language, which is the main official language spoken in Brunei is Bahasa Malay which is the main language spoken in Indonesia and Malaysia. So a very different language, but with that, basically you cover the rest of Southeast Asia. We think of us as the stable point, not just for the Southeast Asia, but especially the southern part of, of, of Southeast Asia. We share the same culture, share the same um, religion, uh, sh uh, share the same language, except much, much more stabler. So that's, that's what we're looking at. So Brunei is really in the midst and, and heart of Southeast Asia. So. Um, Brunei, um, similar to Dubai, that we are still diversifying, but different. Uh, it's not yellow, it's very green. 70%, uh, 75% of Brunei is still covered in pristine rainforest, never been touched. Uh, because of oil and gas, we never have to lock down our forest. So what happened is, is the, I mean, the biodiversifying in, in, in Brunei is absolutely Amazing. We used to have a Facebook programmers that cut through Brunei and he lived there for six months. Uh, love it. So, so we think of Brunei as a place not just to, to build industry on, but it's also a good place to have a, to, to have a second house in, uh, to raise a family, uh, for some of your talents to really live in, um, in Brunei. 58% um, of the land would never be cut away. And that's some of the direction from, from the Monac, uh, the Sultan of Brunei. Um, not going to be touched. Friendly Muslim nations, uh, so again, direct access to, to our 1.8 billion uh, friends, largest uh, um, mainstream religion in the, in the entire world uh, right now, so very friendly. Uh, we are members with uh, obviously United Nations, but also Southeast Asian Associations, World Trade Organization and APEC. And we have uh, many trade agreements, and I think this, this is the one that we want to show. We have a trade agreement with 24 countries, but then that's, that's Spain, three billion people. Um, Brunei being very safe, no, nobody is worried about Brunei, so it's easy for us to, to cut a lot of trade agreement with a lot of people. Um, so this is way, way underutilized in, in Brunei. Uh, we do have a factory in garment in, in Brunei that provide half the t-shirt of, of Disney. Um, and it's just because we are friendly. But again, these are story that uh, people don't know and, and way underutilized. Uh, uh, access of Brunei. Bruneian are educated and connected, uh, like what we say. 
75 percent of population is our working population, so we're ready to 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 go in this, into the industry. Um, tax wise, very low. Um, 18.5 is the second lowest in the whole of Southeast Asia, just just after Singapore. I think Singapore is about 17 percent. Um, however, zero sales tax, zero capital gain tax. So I think when we include the whole thing, and we're doing a study right now, Brunei is the lowest tax place in the whole of Southeast Asia. So very, very interesting, uh, way underexplored right now. Um, yeah. So what we're seeing here, uh, just, just give you a snapshot. This is a Canadian um, air flight simulator uh, in Brunei. So we have people flying in from the American, South American to come here, pilot, to be trained in very high-tech air flight simulator uh, uh, in Brunei. And this is a listed company in, in, in Canada that we have a joint venture on. Uh, we usually, a lot of time, we call invest in our deal so that we have skin uh, in the game. So we don't have to worry about that. You know, you, you, you've been left alone and the government will take away your plan. It, that, that will not fly in Brunei. Uh, so instead, we're looking for a lot of friendly uh, partnership with you. Um, premium, high quality uh, standard. Again, uh, luckily, uh, <coughs> thanks to the oil and gas that we do have, um, I think that we have a lot of five star facility in Brunei. Uh, we can build more, and we look forward to build more with our friends uh, using our forest. And you know that we own some of the, the, the best hotel chain in, around the world. And I think uh, our deputy finance minister co founded some of those chains. Um, so we love to collaborate, not just in Brunei, but around the world as well. Uh, very strong and committed common support to make this work. Um, two years in a row, uh, we are the number one most improved country in the world in terms of uh, the World Bank's report of doing business, uh, ease of doing business report. Two in a row, we are ranked number one most improved. Uh, so very, very serious about improving all the different regulation and red tape such that we can do business a lot, a lot easier. 100% um, foreign ownership is allowed in Brunei. Uh, with, with, with some exceptions, so let me be, be very open. Uh, oil and gas, we do have some uh, uh, exception. Uh, Slumberjay um, and, the, and the rest, Halliburton is in Brunei, but they have collaboration with some local partnerships. So we do, we call that such that we can bring up our local business people. So oil and gas, there are some exceptions. Construction uh, for government project, there are some exceptions. But apart from that, there are very little uh, prohibitions. So we welcome you to really do different uh, business in, in Brunei. 100% um, foreign ownership is possible. We would love for you to join venture with the government. So we provide the extra stability both way. Um, infrastructure is readily available. We have uh, highway run through the entire Brunei. Uh, water is not a problem. Um, electricity is very affordable thanks to our very low cost of oil and gas uh, right now. Uh, I think for many years, I think we are one of the lowest in the entire Southeast Asia in terms of electricity. Um, pioneer tax taxes. Uh, for some uh, particular sector, I think today we can dive a little bit more about it. Uh, we have up to five years, up to 11 years of exemption of tax. So this is very, very, very friendly. Um, dedicated support, we talk more, uh, that we want to, to really work with our investor. So a lot of uh, uh, big uh, international inv institution is already in Brunei. Uh, we have uh, you know, Bank of China recently just came in. Shell been there for many years. You have KPMG, PwC. Uh, Deloitte and the rest is, is been there for a long, long time. Uh, Total and the rest is, is, is there. And this is just a snapshot of some of them. So we have dedicated industry sites. Some of them are fully built up, uh, ready to go, uh, site across the country. So 30 sites. Um, fast Track, FDI. Um, Brunei Economic Development Board, which is, uh, the, which is where I am. And, uh, and, and our deputy finance minister is our chairman. Uh, sit at the beginning of, of the food chain of, of talking to corporate uh, outside Brunei so that we can collaborate. And then within one to two months, and they reach the, the minister level, five ministers, they're making a decision. So a deal can be finalized, good quality deal can be finalized as short as, as, short as one to two months if, if that's really high quality. Um, these are the sectors. Uh, uh, that took mention. So these are obviously there are many sectors that we can do in Brunei, but these are five. First, we have Hala, uh, Brunei, view on uh, Islamic uh, country, a lot of Islamic value. So very Hala, Hala food, Hala agriculture, Hala cosmetic, Hala pharmaceutical. Uh, so we thought when we put in the Brunei brand there, we, then we can really 
you know, uh, go after the 1.8 billion consumer of, of, of Islamic in, in, in the world. So very, very strong or very, very uh, key sector for Brunei here is the Hala. Uh, business services is interesting. Uh, we are going after uh, BPO. Uh, Philippines and, Ma and Malaysia is, is quite big already in Southeast Asia for that. We think we can do uh, one notch higher. Ra rather than call center, we can do some back office finance uh, in Brunei as well. As we know, we manage, uh, we, are, we run one of the oldest sovereign fund uh, in the world. So with that, there's a lot of different financial institutions that keep coming to Brunei and we want them to build out some back office in Brunei. So if you want to run some with us, uh, feel free to. Logistic Hub, uh, we just signed one big uh, deal with uh, a China company, as we mentioned just now, uh, linking the port uh, directly to, with, uh, uh, to China. And recently, um, we just signed a $3.5 billion uh, FDI deal uh, in Brunei. So we, we are on a roll. Um, we want to do more with, with all of you. Tourism is very new in Brunei. We thought this is something that we love to develop with our friend. Ecotourism, a lot of people say it. I'm not sure how exactly uh, it, it can work out in a way that you can you know, go after the different clientele. Brunei, we think we should have a premium uh, branding to it. So how can we do a premium uh, eco and medical tourism? I think this is something that we are we are working on right now. Love for you to partner. Uh, this is obviously very mature. Uh, a lot of exploration in Brunei already. But if you are still interested in downstream oil and gas and petrochemical, I think we can uh, we can talk a lot more here. So these are some details. Uh, we can talk more details about it as uh, I think we open the Q&A. Um, these are some of the testimonial of the company that has been in Brunei already. Um, some from Canada, some from Turkey, interestingly, really from around the world. With that, I'd like to show you a, a, a quick video. But before that, um, these are some of the sta very stable, political stable, very low crime rate. One of those countries you can walk at night down the streets, your girlfriend, your wife, you know, drive away, you will not be worried about that. They will not come back. So you, small country, you know. You, you ask your friend, so where's my wife? You know, they will, or husband, they will track you down for you. Uh, very clean and green. Um, very centrally located again, uh, very favorable tax rate. I think that's, that's what we wanted to really talk about, friendly. Okay, I'd like to show you a, a, a video about Brunei. As you know, we are very excited about Brunei. If Tato, if your permission, maybe I show one more. Okay. Yep. So that's the, the the sales video, uh, all real picture, all real video. But I want to show you one thing that is show a very unique style of Brunei, which is the green style of Brunei.
Thank you. So I hope uh, that gives uh, some background about Brunei. Uh, for those of you who have not been to Brunei before, or so I think uh, earlier on, uh, Sun introduced a few sectors that uh, Brunei is trying to focus on. Uh, this looking to you know, the strength of Brunei in what we believe uh, could potentially create a, a success story along these uh, few sectors. Uh, halal being one of them that, so when we talk about halal, it can be halal food, halal pharmaceutical, halal cosmetic, so uh, some uh, related products like that. And we talk about downstream oil and gas. I think Brunei being an oil and gas rich country, so, so some of the resources, for example, oil, uh, is now being channeled to, towards refinery activities, uh, gas into some downstream activities to create more economic activities for Brunei. Uh, then we have uh, tourism. I think tourism, you've seen the green of, you know, how green Brunei is and uh, the potential of uh, this eco-tourism. Uh, although Brunei is a very small country, uh, the government has uh, set aside 58% of the country uh, to the heart of Borneo initiatives. What it means is uh, this, this part of 58% of the country will remain as a virgin forest. Create a lot of opportunity for universities all over the world. We have Japanese, uh, Japanese uh, university, they have uh, other universities from other, other countries conducting research on biodiversity that could potentially lead to pharmaceutical uh, res you know, research and products and things like that. So yeah, you saw the water village as well, which is quite unique. Uh, has been there for more than hundred years. Uh, so people used to live on with water village and travel to the to the to the to, sh to the shore by boat uh, every day. Uh, so so the, the the houses are still there. So create a very unique uh, tourism experience. Uh, we talk about uh, innovation, technology, you know, ICT. Uh, obviously, we know today uh, we don't, we can't run away from technology. Being a small country, you still need to be connected to the rest of the world. So we have a lot of submarine cables that's linked to, to the outside world. And uh, even though the usage uh, domestically is actually a small percentage of whatever we have, so what it means is we have a lot of excess bandwidth that we can use to create a lot of our ICT-related activities, uh, data center and the like. Uh, and then uh, we talk about logistics. Uh, so we created a partnership with uh, another FDI from China uh, to help to you know, develop the port and to create, uh, hopefully over time, a regional hub for Southeast Asia region uh, that will facilitate a more efficient port and more cost-effective uh, operation and uh, and hopefully we see quite a bit of a transshipment uh, and then we are working on the airport as well so I think for the economy to develop I think we believe in ensuring that all these uh, infrastructure are you know well you know maintained operated and uh, create that competitive uh, uh, you know advantage over over the others uh, so I think these are the five sectors. Of course, uh, we in Brunei, we are not just limiting to these five sectors. If there are people who come to us with ideas that they would like to uh, propose some other uh, potential investment into Brunei, we obviously are very happy to, to explore them. Uh, you know, so the channel, as we presented earlier on, uh, we if you have any queries, any, any proposals, any ideas that you'd like to share with us about the potential uh, opportunity to work together in Brunei. Uh, we understand that, uh, you know, like many of you who have not been to Brunei, uh, to, you know, to make the first investment into Brunei will inevitably take a bit more encouragement. Uh, so we offer, you know, we have funds within uh, Ministry of Finance that was set up to uh, co-invest with uh, some of the foreign investors who are looking, you know, trying to set up operation in Brunei. So they they give uh, uh, hopefully some level of comfort that uh, uh, you have a local partner to investing together with you, and and the local partner is also a government link 
uh, that will ensure that you know the projects are well supported and and uh, continue to be viable and and you know and, and be successful. So I think that that hopefully is is another sort of a assurance to uh, to you know to inc to build up confidence among the foreign investors looking into Brunei. Apart from all the other things that we you know you always encounter when you talk about FDI like investment incentives, uh, you know and, and you know. Uh, land availability, industrial land availability and all that. But uh, on top of all these various, uh, you know, hard infrastructure, there are also some what I call the soft infrastructure, like uh, how politically stable uh, Brunei is, uh, you know, and with the clean and green environment, I think it really provides a very, very livable city. And, and with, the, with the connectivity we have with the rest of the world, uh, you know, we fly three times to uh, daily to Singapore, for example. Uh, so we fly three or four times to Kuala Lumpur every day. Uh, and we have daily flights to Manila in Philippines, Jakarta in Indonesia, Bangkok uh, uh, in Hanoi, and where else? Uh, also a lot of ASEAN countries, uh, you know, we have daily flights to, and we will fly daily to, to Hong Kong as well. Uh, we fly daily to Dubai, not forgetting Dubai, and uh, and to London, and to Melbourne. So so in in a way we are quite well connected to the rest of the world. So providing that 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 comfortable living environment in Brunei, where you know where you, you know you where cost of living is actually not very expensive, and uh, and then you you can be connected to the rest of the world through various of this uh, destination that Royal Brunei flies to. So I suppose I hope I give you some you know some background about Brunei and some basic information about Brunei uh, and the sectors that we are focusing on. I, I thought maybe it's good for me to sort of open up the floor and in case uh, you know you have any questions, I'd like to understand a bit more about the opportunities, or maybe you want to share with me or with us about uh, some of the ideas that you have that uh, maybe. You know, and, and want to understand how we can take it forward. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Is, is it working? Yes. Hello. It's, it's working. Thank you for a very beautiful presentation of your country. It's very interesting. Though we've never been before in Brunei, but I hope we will visit it soon. I must say that uh, half of our Ukrainian delegation is connected to agriculture sphere. I think even more than a half mm -hmm. in agriculture sphere. Uh, talking truly, talking truly, I never heard that uh, Ukraine had the trade relationship with uh, with Brunei. I, I never heard it because I'm not from government. Uh, I work in a very large Ukrainian company, ninth largest uh, in the country. But I know that, um, as you know, Ukraine is an agrarian country and it's uh, top 10 exporter uh, in number one in sunflower oil, number two in grains, worldwide exporting. And I know that one of our biggest client uh, is Indonesia. That is not far away from you. So uh, if it's interesting, uh, we are interested in the trading operations, uh, in uh, delivering uh, some goods uh, exporting some goods. I have a presentation of my business group. It's very big. We are we are number one in gas filling stations in Ukraine. We are from oil business, but uh, also we have green pollution energy business, uh, green energy business, etc., etc., etc. But one of the, our most uh, uh, biggest parts in business now that will uh, grow up in a year to year, it's uh, in agriculture business. Because we, we are interested to work in this uh, division. Okay, I think we can maybe take up separately. Uh, we do have a booth uh, at the exhibition hall, so we can uh, you know, discuss this opportunity on the site uh, with uh, the delegation. I understand, there. yes. Yep. yes. <coughs> My name is Iftakhar Taram, Vice Chairman of Royal International Group. 
I have two questions only. Uh, it's a beautiful country. Uh, we, uh, we miss that one. We have not been, but definitely next month I'll be visiting your country. Uh, I'm from the hospitality sector. Just want to know that if somebody wants to make a hotel there, is your government give the land support and what other support can be given? Do you want to answer, answer that question first? Yes, please. <coughs> uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, we, for hotel, for industrial activities, the government do prepare industrial sites okay. uh, for people to build plant, you know, factories and, and all that. So those, those are available. But I think for hotel, I think there are, you know, private collaboration that with people who own land, because you know, for, for this type of activities, it, you need to be very specific about the location where you want to build your hotel. It's not just like factories, which are probably a bit more flexible. Uh, so, but I think for hotel, you need to know where you want to sort of build your hotels. I think there are private private uh, land that uh, private you know players who can form collaboration with with you. And uh, so, so what I encourage you, if you are really coming to Brunei next month or also, I think what you could do is uh, you can uh, contact the Brunei Economic Development Board uh, so we can put together an agenda a program for you and uh, so that we can help you to link up with some of these uh, private players probably that then you can explore the, mar the market together. Uh, but I, I, I think we are looking at also, you know, uh, the, when it comes to hotel, I think we do have quite, uh, quite a big inventory of hotels already in Brunei. So, so I think it, you know, it, it's a, if you were to target the hospitality business, the tourism sector, uh, maybe it's more about the kind of activities that the tourists could do. I think those type of investment will. I think maybe it's in a bit of a shortage at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. You said you have uh, two questions. Yeah, yeah. You have already answered that. Okay, I, want, good, I, good. I want you to know that what is the interest for the tourists. So this is okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Just, just, uh, just to add, add to uh, what the Deputy Finance Minister say, um, I think if you're interested to visit Brunei, we can definitely organize a tour for Brunei. I think hotel is one of those things you have to go and see the site to believe it. Um, we we can um, show you the current hotel right now. Some of them are quite stunning uh, on the waterfront. Uh, we do have some waterfront uh, space that I think is still available, but again, it's up to negotiation. Or if you want it, uh, like the, the, the Tatok say, in the forest, uh, it depends on what kind of hotel uh, you really want to build. So please come by and, and then you can figure out not just the hotel, but what are the other traveling facility you want to build. Do you want to build an eco trail you know, all the way up to the mountain? Uh, with different lodge, you know, throughout uh, uh, the the scenery, so we can we can definitely discuss more. I think the same come to agriculture. Uh, love to explore what kind of uh, vegetation, uh, what are the plants that we can build in Brunei. Brunei is about size of ten Singapore, so it's the same area as Dubai. So ten of Dubai, uh, that that's the land size. So we're thinking of high yield uh, uh, crops that might be more uh, better for for Brunei. So so let's explore what are those. Those uh, the use crop that is uh, have demand around the world. Okay, thank you. Sorry, yeah, please. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Mrs. Fatima. I come from Senegal. I am the president of African Businesswoman. Uh, I congratulate you, you. My English is bad, but I try. I congratulate you for the development, economic development of Brunei. My question. Have you businessmen who are interested to inv invest in Africa? Uh, in my country, in Senegal, we have petrol now, not export. We, we need to develop agriculture. You have a land, and you have a good uh, economic env environment, and you have a lot of capital human. And we would like to have an uh, uh, investor from you uh, to produce mango juice because you have many mango to export to Brunei. Then could we have a businessman who are interesting to invest to Senegal and to export to, to, to Brunei. And now 
we business uh, women, we have a project to uh, realize green villages, villages which have social housing for young people, and each young people have uh, land for agriculture and uh, um, poultry and the cattle and the industry. Now, if you have uh, um, businessmen who, are, who, who had interest to invest in Senegal, in Mali, in Africa, our organization is uh, um, in this uh, country. And we have a project to produce uh, organic bark yep. bite cassava. Okay. Because the uh, plastic bars is forbidden in uh, our country, now we have a partner to to produce organic bark. If we have, a, uh, you need infrastructure, yeah. and the government has to build a new town. The government needs infrastructure for building road, extra, extra. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you. Yep. I I remember yesterday you asked the question in in the in ah, the yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. No, I'm sure Africa offers a lot of opportunities, and uh, and 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 uh, is is a, you know Africa is a big continent co compared to to Brunei, yeah, being a very small country. <laughs> so I'm sure uh, it has more more to offer than what Brunei can can look at. Uh, yes, I'll take the information back to uh, the investment agency in Brunei, and then see what they can do. I think when you talk about agriculture, I think maybe our our friend here can do something as well. In, but here is not to try to promote the uh, cross-country <laughs> investment. <laughs> it's more to talk about Brunei investment <laughs> opportunities. Uh, maybe next questions. Yeah, yeah please. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for the good presentation. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Mikhail Shiketa from Ukraine. I represent a company named Synapse. The company, it's a Ukrainian company, and the company has developed a new approach to production of green energy from biomass. Okay. And therefore, in this respect, could you please elaborate maybe more on current situation in uh, Brunei in terms of energy, uh, electricity? Are you exporting, importing? What are the main sources? Are you interested in green, clean energy? What are the... Uh, uh, what government can propose? Are there any like yep. uh, feed-in tariffs and in, in mm. all this stuff? Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. Uh, yes, I think Brunei is a oil in, uh, rich in oil and gas. I think we export uh, for many years our oil and gas uh, to to uh, overseas country. Uh, our domestic consumption, being a uh, 400,000 people, is not a very big uh, consumption. Uh, so we tend we in the old, you know for many decades we export uh, these commodities. But uh, as I explained earlier on, uh, in recent years, uh, we started to look at downstream activities. Uh, last week, uh, we signed a FID for uh, uh, a refinery uh, mm -hmm. investment of about 3.5 billion US dollar, uh, which will hopefully be operational in about three or four years time. Uh, so there are also other downstream activities like uh, fertilizer uh, uh, and the like, so methanol, so, so create a bit more economic activities for the country. Uh, still, of course, uh, with all that, uh, we will still have access for export overseas. Talking about uh, renewable energy, uh, Brunei as a country is also a signatory to the Paris uh, Climate uh, Accord that was signed in New York uh, in April last year. Uh, so so we, have, we have commitment to, to clean energy. Uh, so we, of, we of course welcome uh, any proposal uh, that uh, makes you know makes sense to Brunei because uh, when you talk about clean energy or renewable energy, you can talk about so many different type of uh, renewable energy other than solar. So you could look at wind, hydro, and waves or whatever. But uh, in the Brun in Brunei's case, I think we do welcome uh, if you have proposals because. Uh, some of the some of the renewable energy sources may not when we when we first look at it maybe ten years ago were not workable. We again with uh, technology these days you never know some of these may mm -hmm. become now uh, become viable. Mm -hmm. So so again uh, we've uh, we we have we have spoken to a number of uh, 
potential investors from many other many different countries. So again, it's something that if we could uh, learn from uh, Ukraine uh, with what whatever technology that you have at the moment, mm -hmm. which may make a difference to the some of those that we are looking at at the moment. So again, uh, uh, the gateway again is Brunei Economic Development Board. So so you have his you have the CEO's card, uh, right, right, you know, yeah, right us, so we can c c get in touch with each other. Yeah. And I encourage uh, many of you to visit Brunei. Uh, if you do wish to to do that, uh, we can put together a program for you, and then sort of link you up with the various relevant ministries uh, or agencies for you to meet up and understand a bit more about whether it is uh, possible. There is a possibility. I can call you. Yeah, yes. you can. You can. Yes. Yeah. So to 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 do that, you know. So uh, I think at the moment this this. You know, there, there are many things we could do. As I said, you know, we are not kind of limited ourselves to these five sectors. Uh, so if, if renewable energy, because of our commitment to uh, Paris Accord, we, we are looking at it and we are looking at a few alternatives at, at the moment, uh, each with a pro potentially different technology, uh, different uh, advancement in technology as, as well. Uh, let's see whether this, this could work. Uh, if, you know, uh, <coughs> I, and again, I, I do encourage uh, all of you to make make a visit to Brunei. From my ex experience talking to foreign investors over the last year or so, many of them uh, never never look at Brunei before until when we see them and they suddenly felt that suddenly ask themselves the question, why have not why have they not looked at Brunei? And so when they start exploring Brunei, a lot, you know, things start to put, put to, you know, come together, and then when they visited Brunei, and they started to appreciate about Brunei, why Brunei is being different to the other, the other countries that they had visited. Uh, for example, the clean and uh, green environment, and uh, and and and, and the pol you know politically st stability in the country, uh, and you know some of them end up, uh, you know putting resources on the ground long term uh, just while they were planning and uh, to understand the country a bit more. So we had a few examples of that and, and many of them actually turned into uh, real projects. So we, we are starting to implement a few, few of them. So over the last year or so, we have brought in uh, uh, a small investment from Abu Dhabi, some investment from India, some from Korea, uh, and some from China at the moment. So we have continued to expand and to try to diversify our uh, uh, investors base to as, as, as wide as possible. Uh, so yeah, please, you know, get in touch with us and, and, and same yeah. thing for you. You know, we can arrange something for a few days visit, understand the country more, if not appreciate the clean environment that we have in Brunei too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please, another question. Yep. Yeah. Um. <coughs> oh, yeah. Um, first of all, well, my name is Roman Bayrak, and I'm here with my colleague, uh, Mikhail Mazur. We are representing here the company called Synthesa Agro from Ukraine. We're into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, the processing, yeah, processing business, proce oh, food processing. Good. Yeah, we oh, process good. sunflower seeds. Um, in Ukraine, and uh, we do have something in common. Yeah, you are number one in hospitality probably in the world, yes, and uh, probably one of the highest uh, GDP country in the world, but uh, we are number one in the exporting sunflower seed, seed oil as well as production of sunflower seeds. But it's not, it's not something that I wanted to, to mention here. First, per first of all, for the beginning, yeah, for, for, thank you for a beautiful presentation. Yes, this, is, this, uh, this, this adds a little bit to, to the to this limited knowledge, actually, we had before about Brunei, and uh, we have, you know, I guess my colleagues here will agree with me that we had this in Ukraine at least, yes? We had this stereotype about Brunei. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is like a paradise, yeah, where the people are all rich and they all make a lot of money, they don't need anything, and they are born rich already. And, uh, <laughs> so, and, and, um, and, and this is something very far, very closed, and, and then probably there's no sense even to talk about it. And all of a sudden, yes, we realize that there is uh, the Brunei, very open country, number one Facebook, and the company that is trying to be at the center of ASEAN market, um, which I think is very smart. And, and I think it's, it, and it's a compliment to you, to your government, 
that you are um, uh, you are trying to uh, to to and, and you do in this you really do in this this progress and and uh, and and demonstrate this uh, this over the last three years that as I mentioned you mentioned that you were number one in the world in improving uh, your uh, doing business yes in in in, in Brunei and, and and this is something that I wanted to talk first about that this is something probably what Ukraine can learn from you yeah what Ukraine requires right now is to learn how to do business with domestics domestic businessmen as well as as well as as well as the the, the potential investors, and um, and, and I think that here's uh, here's a lot that we can talk about, and that'll be uh, be it'd be great if we could set up some kind of programs, joint programs, your government, our government, where we can set up, I don't know, maybe educational program or something, training programs. I mean, but your your experience is very valuable to us as a country, um, and uh, so so uh, my compliment to you on that, you. truly. Uh, the the second the second then it's kind of a question I guess and the more 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 um, uh, applicable to the situation what we have and I just had this idea yeah, that as I mentioned before we export a lot of sunflower oil as well as a lot of sunflower oil goes to the uh, to the Asian to the Asian markets um, we we do export a lot but we don't really we don't really know what's going on with this oil over there and a lot of people take this share market uh, uh, market share from from this business we would like to move further yeah we would like to be present at this market and maybe it would be a good idea to talk about Brunei as our base yeah, yeah. to distribute yeah. the oil that we export or even import into Asia and then distribute out of Brunei to the other countries that are surround the Br Brunei and that, that's something you know that you know, I wanted to ask maybe and maybe develop in the further discussions you know would it be um, I mean, in terms of the tax and, and how to do business in Brunei? I think it's 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 a, it's a great opportunity to just start it right there, in Brunei, in the heart, as you said, of the Asia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I can uh, respond to that before I pass to the CEO. <clears throat> First of all, thank you for your kind words on Brunei. So uh, I'm sure if you I, I you know when you do visit Brunei, and I hope uh, you really get that impression uh, about what we have to offer. Uh, I'm not sure how much you know how much you can learn from Brunei, but uh, you know, but definitely there there's a lot for us to learn from Ukraine as well. But uh, again, this mutual mutual learning from each other will be always uh, always good. Uh, on your propose your your kind of indicate your indicative mm -hmm. proposal, mm -hmm. uh, I think it actually is exactly the type of things that will work uh, for Brunei. Uh, of course, Brunei being a small country, small economy. There are a lot of things that uh, uh, companies that go to Indonesia, for example, probably will not look at Brunei because of the size of the populations and all that. But there are other reasons to come to Brunei, not just because of the population. Mm -hmm. So the strategic uh, location that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier on. And more in, very importantly, I, I, you know, when people talk about political stability, and I do really need to emphasize that is an important selling point for Brunei. And, and that that has continued to be very stable for many centuries. Uh, so, so those are the, you know, the, the sort of selling point for Brunei and the strength of Brunei. And with the port upgrading, the facilities and, and all that, and that will further enhance the competitiveness of Brunei. And, and in terms of the, you know, the processing activities or the distribution center for the regional hub, I think, again, this is where we were talking about business services, the logistics, I think this is where we believe we, we, we are very good in. Uh, whether you're talking about seaport, uh, which we have a joint venture, as I said, but if you do it airport, for example, our airport, uh, again, because we are a small country, it's the airport is actually quite free. You can take off anytime, you can land anytime. So in terms of de you know, delivery, timing, and all that, you can manage it more efficiently than many other cities in the region that you have to find slots to to land, to find slots to take off, which may not be so convenient. So, so again, those we believe is, you know, when we look at the airport, which is underused, is actually a strength that we have that we can offer. So let's let's explore this. I definitely is an area that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, you know, really fit in very nicely for Brunei. And I, I, I encourage her. Uh, then we can have further conversation on this to take it to the next level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, so you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think okay. a lot of people in, uh, agree. I think a lot of people uh, focus on the, the rest of the nation in Southeast Asia. It's a booming country, uh, region. I think Brunei is way under, uh, uh, underutilized right now. And this is really our first time coming out, uh, Brunei. And, and I think I want to say welcome to Brunei. I love to have you coming to Brunei stay at our waterfront hotel. Uh, come by. Uh, we can organize a, a, a schedule for a few days so you can really take a look at uh, the, the landscape in Brunei. And uh, we take it seriously uh, because he's my boss. He's a chairman. Uh, so that's my KPI. So please come to Brunei. We make sure that you are really uh, taken uh, uh, care of. And I want to say that um, today, uh, if, if we are really interested to talk business, I think we should uh, get to quite a bit of bottom. Um, Tato actually was in Europe, and then we really snatched him away uh, to come to today's conference. Um, a lot for many, many years managing the, the investment for whole of Brunei um, can make a lot of key decisions that might otherwise take months. Uh, so love to uh, to discuss more such that we can nail uh, some next step uh, in, a, in either today or, or tomorrow while we're still around. Well, it's very important for me to meet every one of you here. So I, I'm glad we have the opportunities to, to meet up with you. Uh, so so again, uh, we, we we can, you know, if you do visit, we can show you a few other things. But you do let me let us know any specific focus, and we can put in a few other things together with us here. We do have a representation from uh, the local university, so you can understand about, you know, how edu you know the edu educate edu uh, educated workforce in Brunei, mm -hmm. and we have uh, 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 medic for medical uh, industry here. Uh, running the only private hospital in Brunei uh, with the facilities uh, very up to speed uh, equipment that we, we, we have in, in Brunei. We also have the, the company that, uh, that promote the halal products. Uh, at the moment they are focusing on food but uh, we also have an industry which was shown earlier on a Canadian company coming to Brunei to manufacture pharmaceutical. Uh, again, it's halal pharmaceutical. Uh, so there are, there are also Korean interests to come to Brunei to look at halal cosmetic. Uh, again, a lot of these are coming to Brunei, uh, processing, research, just like what you were mentioning earlier on, and taking this strategic location of Brunei as a base, uh, as a friendly country where you know we are in Brunei, we always say we are friends to everybody. Uh, being a small country, we cannot be, we cannot have afford to have enemies. So we are yeah. friends to everybody, and so please do come. And we, you, can, you know that we are all very friendly people. Also, like the Ukraine, like what uh, what uh, Sun was saying about about his experience. Yeah, I'm sure we've, uh, we've again. I, 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 I know fr I have many friends also from many other parts of the world. So Saikat, my good friend there. So, uh, so, you know, so I have many Indian friends as well. So I think we, we find, you know, again, as I said, we are always friends to everybody. Excuse me, Dato. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dato. Um, I just want to uh, add something um, uh, to that question that um, uh, Ghanim International is a 100% government owned company, and uh, we have started uh, manufacturing our products in UK, in Birmingham, and also we are manufacturing products in. Uh, Brunei as well. So, and we are exporting to China, and we are also going to Korea. We are bringing our products to uh, Middle East, to Dubai as well. So, we have opened a company in Dubai as well. So, there may be opportunity to use your channel for distribution, and maybe our. We have also uh, creating good network and channels. And if you come to Brunei, that will be a win-win situation for both parties to utilize the channels that we can use. Yeah, yeah I think uh, just just add on to what uh, Dr. Noah was saying. Uh, we, we have a con the distribution network into China and establishing one in Korea. And if we do something along like what he was yeah. saying, you know, so we could we you could we could either market it through your own branding or we could sort of uh, work with the Brunei Halal certification mm -hmm. so we can penetrate a new market for you yeah. into the Halal sort of a market uh, in, 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 in Southeast Asia. You're talking about a few hundred million of uh, Muslim population and also the same in, uh, in, in China, even in China. Yeah. 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 Thank you.
Thank you very much for Thank your you so much. Thank you. Thank you. joining us and uh, hope you learn a bit more about Brunei and hopefully we uh, sort of uh, interest you enough uh, to make a visit to Brunei at least. <laughs> may, excuse Thank me, that, that is, may I just request everyone to take one of our um, award-winning product. Uh, this uh, this uh, product has um, won the award in Gulf Food a few weeks ago. So you please feel free to take one packet. Thank you.